Take a guess at what we will talk about in today's episode. Something you see in TV shows and movies more often than you know, but you hardly notice it. Something you encounter as frequently as every week, especially during the pandemic. But don't give a second thought. Yeah, in today's episode, we will talk about the iconic takeout box that becomes synonymous to Chinese food in America. Hi, my name is Christy, and this is the American Chinese Food Show. The box you see at Chinese takeout places is as Chinese as chop suey, meaning it's not quite Chinese. <laughs> If it's not Chinese, where did it come from? Its name might give us some hints. First, what do you call this box? A, a takeout container? A Chinese food box? Have you also heard it called the paper pail or the oyster pail? Why is it called an oyster pail? What is an oyster pail? Well, at one point in the United States, fresh oysters were more popular and less expensive than they are today. In 1892, the annual estimated consumption of oysters in the United States were 12 billion. Many restaurants even offered take-home seafood specials in the East Coast urban centers like New York. This is a menu of the Sagan Mall restaurants and lunchroom. There are oysters stewed in a can to take home and fried oyster in a box to take home. So is oyster belt the take-home box? Nope. According to the history and present condition of the fishery industries from the Department of the Interior in 1881, there were different types of containers for transporting raw oysters. The oyster can is a tin receptacle that holds from one pint to four quarts in which oysters are packed for shipment. There's the oyster keg, a small wooden keg. There's also the oyster tub, which is simply an oyster pail of larger size. The oyster pail is a wooden receptacle with a locked cover. They hold from four to six gallons each and cost from seventy-five cents to one dollar each. These pails were returned to the wholesale dealer by the customers. Unless people were taking home four gallons of oyster for dinner, the oyster pail was not what we have today. But what happened was the patented devices for securing the cover were improved by an inventor called Frederick Weeks Wilcox in Chicago. He called his invention a paper pail, and he patented what we know today as the takeout box on November thirteenth, eighteen ninety-four. Having very little clues what it would become or what sort of sour pork is. It was made from a single piece of paper that was folded into a leak-proof container and secured with a wire handle. Even though the design of the oyster pail is over 125 years old, it's ingenious even by today's standards. First, the containers fit easily inside one another for easy storage. It's a common scene you see stacks and stacks of these boxes in one big plastic bag on the counters of Chinese takeout restaurants across the country. These takeout boxes also unfold into plates, so you can finish your dinner without having to wash any dishes. All you need to do is unhook the metal wire; it unfolds and lays out into a plate. And if you don't finish your food in one sitting, it folds right back up, ready to store back in the fridge. How cool is that? While pollution and overfishing slowly destroyed the street side oyster trade, Chinese food delivery took off during the great suburban migration of the post World War II era. With over forty thousand Chinese restaurants across the country today, Chinese food became the biggest consumer of these takeout boxes. Many takeout boxes, made primarily of coated cardboard to resist grease and liquids, are made in the United States. The biggest manufacturers produce three hundred million boxes a year. The first individuals to mass produce these oyster pails were the Bloomer Brothers of New York, who started their container manufacturing business in 1900. They eventually became Fold Pack. In the 1970s, a graphic designer working at Fold Pack put a pagoda on the side of the box and a stylized thank you on top, and the transformation to the Chinese takeout box we know today was complete. It's a pretty amazing journey how something created from oyster, a popular cheap food to serve alongside beer, not confined to class, equally popular in the African American communities with Native Americans and colonists from Europe in the 1800s, became the symbol of Chinese food. Today, Full Pack offers microwave-safe Chinese food cartons that use glue instead of wire. They also manufacture containers in a variety of sizes and designs. As you can see from the product catalog, they have white, pagoda, phoenix and dragon, and even Thai. Before we end this episode, 
What do restaurants in China use for takeout? Regular deli containers. That's it for today's short episode. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. See you soon.